here to wrap up our first week of poetry writing. First, we're going to reread all the poems that we read this week together. Then I'm going to give you a new poem to read, and I'm going to give you something to write about. I would like to echo read all these poems with you. Um, so it's going to be my turn and then your turn. The first one we're going to reread is Toaster Time by Eve Miriam. Ready? Tick, tick, tick. Tick, 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 tick. Toast up a sandwich. Quick, quick, quick. Ham witch, jam witch. Lick, lick, lick. Oh. Tick, tick, tick. Tick, tick, tick. Stop. Pop. Good job. Here's the next one that we read. The Frog on the Log by Ilo Orleans. Ready, my turn and then your turn. There was once a green little frog, 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 who played in the wood on a log, log, log. A screech owl sitting in a tree, tree, tree came after the frog with a scree, scree, scree. When the frog heard the owl in a flash, 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 he leaped in the pond with a splash, splash, splash. Good job. Ready for two more poems? Here we go. The next one we're going to read is Blowing Bubbles by Margaret Hillert. My turn and then your turn. Dip your pipe and gently blow. Watch the tiny bubble grow. Big and bigger, round and fat. rainbow colored and then splat. Good job. The last one we're going to reread is Shore by Mary Britton Miller. Play on the seashore and gather up shells. Kneel in the damp sands digging wells. Run on the rocks where the seaweed slips. Watch the waves and the beautiful ships. All right, now I'm going to show you the new one for this week. After being reminded of all the poems that we read this week, what do you know about how poems are different from stories? Yeah, good ideas. You might have said that poems are shorter. They have rhyming words. Um, they might have silly words in them that the author makes up to make the poem seem more fun. Um, and they might have sound words in them. Um, and they have a lot of things that you can visualize. And they don't usually have pictures. And stories, when we read a story, it's one long book that might have pictures with it. Um, yeah, so poems are kind of like chants or songs, different from stories. Okay, what else do you know about poems? Great. We're going to read one last poem this week, and it's called Chum. Chum is another word for friend. So we're going to hear about this poet's friend. This is by Arthur Guiderman. I'm going to read it the first time, and I'm going to tell you about some words in the story. Okay. Chums by Arthur Guiderman. Chum means friend. 
he sits and begs. Beg is when a dog will like, might do this, might go up on their hind legs because they're trying to get you to give them something. He gives a paw. That's when a dog like puts their paw up into your hand so that they, you can shake their paw. He is, as you can see, the finest dog you ever saw. Finest means best. He was the best dog. And he belongs to me. He follows me everywhere I go, and even when I swim. I laugh because he thinks that I belong to him. Okay, now I'm going to read it a second time. And I'm not going to explain the words. I'm just going to read it. And I want you to close your eyes and visualize what is happening in the poem. Okay, close your eyes. He sits and begs. He gives a paw. He is, as you can see, the finest dog you ever saw. And he belongs to me. He follows me everywhere I go. And even when I swim. I laugh because he thinks that I belong to him. Open your eyes. What did you visualize when I was reading that poem? Good. I can tell that you had a lot of pictures in your mind as you were listening. You might have pictured the dog putting their paw on their owner's lap. You might have pictured the owner swimming and the dog following behind him in the water. You could have pictured and visualized a lot of things that happened in that poem. Okay. What did you find out about the poet's chum or friend? Who is the poet's friend? It's his dog. Yeah, his friend is his dog. Um, let's echo read. My turn and then your turn. He sits and begs. He gives a paw. He is, as you can see, the finest dog you ever saw. And he belongs to me. He follows me everywhere I go. And even when I swim, I laugh because he thinks that I belong to him. Good job. What I would like you to write about today is I want you to pick one of the poems that we read today. So you have a lot of choices. And I want you to listen to it one more time by going back in the video. And I would like you to have a piece of paper and a pencil. You can have some colors if you would like to add color to your pictures. And I want you to listen to the poem one more time. And I want you to draw a picture of what you visualize while you're listening. And I want you to write one or two sentences about what you visualized as you are listening to the poem. So you can go back and listen to Chums, Shore, Toaster Time, um, Blowing Bubbles. I might be forgetting one. Oh, The Frog on the Log. So that's five choices. Go back, listen to it, draw a picture, write two sentences about what you visualized as you were listening to the poem again. Don't forget to send me or your teacher your writing. You can send it in a text by taking a picture or you can send it in an email um, or a Schoology message. And um, if you try writing your own poetry, I'd also love to see that as well. I'll see you next week. We'll continue with some more poetry. Bye.